I dream for all of us to own wardrobes with garments made from sustainable sources, including fair wages for the makers. I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, my name is Linda. I am the curator, as I call myself, the owner of the Slow Wardrobe, my little corner of the woolly world. And for those of you who haven't watched me before, I publish irregular podcasts about my forays into knitting design and knitting projects for myself, uh, showing my own yarns often, as well as uh, episodes about uh, Layer Cake, the collection, the slowly growing collection of linen and wool garments that I have developed completely based on people's demands when they saw me wearing the clothes that I make for myself at wool shows. This episode though is dedicated to an update of my knitting. I think it was November was the last time that I told you about what I was working on and I've got some new projects, new things in the pipeline and new things that I've been working on and um, a couple of finished objects. The first finished object, diving straight in, is a pair of socks that I knitted for my husband. I will have to show you them in the picture here because I can't show them to you live in the episode. He likes them so much that I just discovered. I thought they were in his sock drawer, but he's taken them with him on um, a trip to Germany. He's returning later on today, but he's not here now. And when they come back, they'll be worn. So <laughs> they'll have to be washed again. And then I will hopefully, before I publish this, have a picture of a clean pair of socks to show you. It's a very colorful yarn and uh, I love knitting with it. I'll um, give you the details of the yarn, of course. Um, it was uh, a yarn by Five Moons Yarns. Uh, I'll show you the exact details of what it was called at the bottom of the screen. And I knitted them in Hermione's Everyday Socks. It's a combination of, of knit and purl stitches, which creates an, a nice texture on the sock. and. He liked that uh, in a pair of socks that I had made for myself, so I knitted that pattern into it. Um, and they're sparkly. He loves a sparkle. So that's the first uh, finished object. And um, I, th oh no, I, I've got one other finished object to show you, but I'll show you that later. I'll try to kind of go chronological, uh, chronologically through the products that I'm, I've been working on. Um, I was already working, when I started the socks, I was already working on a new design um, that I think I talked about in November. It's got the uh, Biche et Bouche Le Cashmere et Lambs Wool, which is the dark gray. And then it's got a Rico design sock wool that had sadly been discontinued. I had to hunt down high and low and found it in um, a shop in, in the Netherlands to buy some more of it to um, make a jumper for myself. And that was just going to be a jumper for me. And then um, as I started knitting and came up with a different, an, un, an interesting uh, shape in terms of how the stripes run, I thought actually I could turn this into a pattern maybe. Um, it'll be a bit of a big project because I'd like to grade the pattern to offer a, a selection of different sizes. Um, so it's going to take me quite a while before it's all finished. I'm not even done yet with the design completely. I know what I want it to look like, but I have to calculate number of stitches even with this first one. And then it needs to be graded and test knitted and, and tech edited. So it'll be a while before it's actually finished. Uh, but the start of it is there. As you can see, there are diagonal stripes in the front coming down from um, a low V-neck. But in the back, the jumper is actually straight. The lines are straight and the uh, bottom hem is straight. 
the end of what, I, what you see that I've done is I've tucked it in a little bit with a knitting needle just to give it a little bit of shaping because of course this jumper is big enough to fit me which means that it's far too big for the model that it's on. It looks like she's drowning a little bit in it. it's a mini dress on her rather than uh, the jumper that it is on me but there you have it at least you get an idea. The uh, sleeves will have that same kind of theme going on of having diagonal stripes in on one side and be straight on the other side to uh, give it that extra interest throughout and I will keep you posted with the progress hopefully next time you'll see it it'll be on me and we'll be into grading the pattern and test knitting it. That was the project that I was already working on and one of the reasons that this project is progressing slowly is that I keep interrupting it with other ideas and other things that I do. The socks for my husband were the first project, but then when I was back in the flow of knitting this, all of a sudden, I am trying to remember where and how, but I was completely taken with the notion of crocheting. Oh, I remember what it was. It was a Instagram post by Kirsty Glass Knits, the American broadcaster, and she had knitted a lovely shawl, and it is a wavy pattern, but then at intervals it has tiny little squares, crocheted squares, and I immediately saw the possibility of doing something similar to that with my soliloquy yarn. So I started making a plethora of little squares. You can see them right now. And they all have different colored centers and then uh, a contrasting color for the outside edge. So that's two rounds, if you like, one round in the middle of one color and then a second round in a contrasting color. And I'm currently in the process of putting a border in a third color which is the same that third color is the same for everyone for every one of them around that and I've also come up with an idea of using a combination of that third round together with the side of the little squares that I use to have a starting point as to how I'm going to connect them to each other. They're all loose, half of them are half of the ones that I've made and I have no idea whether I've made enough. It was a start, it's still a little bit of a experiment. That's what I've got, all strung onto a needle. These guys all have their third round then I've got a bunch with the third round with the ends not woven in yet. And then I've got the remainder of ones that still need their third round. And then I'm going to see how much I've got when they're all finished and do a little bit of putting them together and see what that looks like and then decide on how I'm going to progress with it. So again, early stages. Oh gosh, I've got more. Got some more of the ones with the third round already in the bag. Okay, so progress is nice, but I put that on hold again as well because I returned to uh, the jumper and then had my following distraction, which was the idea of making a new sample of a large version of the Fairly Shawl. I had had one of those knitted for me before by one of my test knitters, but it's in a colorway that I don't carry anymore. I figured it would be the most opportune moment to not only create a new sample, but to do that in the new color that I've introduced in the linen, which is the dark teal. I'm wearing my play suit. I'm, you can draw me out in this play suit at the moment. I'm wearing it so much. And I needed to combine that, of course, with a second set, because that's the idea behind the extra large fairly. Here it is in the picture. 
I combined it with the neutrals set, which goes from a natural color linen to black. So there's four colors in a set. So you go gradually from neutrals to black and then go from black to the dark teal, which is the set that I combined it with. So set number one is neutrals to black. Set number two is black to dark teal. And then you keep flowing back and forth through those gradients. So neutral to black, black to dark teal, back to black, back to neutrals, back to black, and then back to dark teal. And instead of saying on the pattern, well, you can knit a bigger one, just keep going the way you are knitting. I rewrote the pattern specifically for this large size, which is much more user friendly, obviously, for people who have got less experience or who end up getting lost in the large number of stitches that you end up with. Because this shawl is knitted from the middle at the top outwards. So you can imagine that by the time you end up with half a shawl that is more than four foot wide, you end up with hundreds and hundreds of stitches on your needle, because that's one half. And then you've got the other half on there as well. The upside of this is that it's an extremely fast knit because you are knitting on large needles, so you can go fast. You knit with a, um, yarn that has been wet spun. Wet spun linen is not hairy in any way. It's very smooth, so it doesn't split, etc. It's very easy to knit with. It's a firm yarn. And the stitches that you use are purely stocking stitch combined with the little eyelets. And the little eyelets are no more than yarn over knit two together. That's it. You are increasing like any triangular shawl at the outside edges and on either side of the middle stitch every other row so it's a very very easy recipe and every time you have knitted a set of eyelets you change to your next color in your gradient so that is very easy to keep track of as well so I wanted to have one of these in time for Unravel at the end of, of February. And I came up with this idea about 10 days before Unravel, something like that. And I thought, okay, this is easy knitting. It's fast knitting, but 10 days, can I do it in 10 days? So I set myself the challenge to go for it. And I did it, I knitted this in exactly one week, only in the evenings, and some daytime knitting, I have to admit, some daytime knitting at the weekend. I was very motivated and managed to do it in a week. Started it on a Friday, finished it the next Thursday. Done. Perfectly on time for Unravel. Now, the choice of going with the neutrals was really because I had discovered with the uh, dark teal that I'd seen in the studio that I absolutely adored it in combination with black gingham. I'll show you a photo here of uh, an outfit of dark teal and black gingham. For some reason, they go so well together. So that's what I went with. Dark teal is one of those colorways that goes with lots of different co other colors. It's a very neutral dark bluey green and there are lots of people who say who end up being surprised because they say well I normally don't wear teal but this works really well I think it's the um, the darkening that comes from the black in this fabric that mutes the teal and turns it into more of a neutral color so it's not as neutral as a navy, for example, but it's going in that direction and it works extremely well. It works well with a lot of other colors too, but black gingham really jumped out at me, which is why I chose to do the big project 
in the colours that are in the dark teal and the black gingham. And boy, does it work well. Of course, this is not the only option. I have these little gradient sets of linen. I'll show them to you here. These are all the different sets. And I'll show you now which ones can be combined because they have a color in common. So for example, the neutrals and the dark teal have got black in common. The neutrals and the red black have got black in common. So do the blue black and the red black or the blue black and the neutrals. Then there are the colors that I did with the new linens that I brought in last summer that all have that beautiful grassy green as a base color. Brick and peacock and moth. You can combine those as well to make a double set like this. I have put a couple of examples of double sets and made them available as kits with a pattern on the website. But if you want to make your own combination, then of course you can just get two of the single sets and uh, add the pattern to that. And um, I will, when I see an order coming in that has two sets of the linen gradients and a fairly extra large pattern, then I will adjust the price and send you a little refund. That's easier than trying to set it up with all the different combinations as a product in the website. If you've got any questions about this, shoot me a message and I'll help you sort things out. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, so I whizzed through this in a week and was able to show it to great effect at Unravel. Now, speaking of Unravel, let me interrupt my knitting flow by showing you some of my purchases. Yes, here it is. The crocheting that I was showing you is in one of the little project bags of Susanna. Her company is called Trava and Wool. I showed one of the other bags last time. I've got more now. I'm absolutely besotted with these little project bags. They are so lovely. They're so precious. This is the one that I bought from her that has my crochet in it. They always have a lovely different fabric on the inside. Here's her little label. There's my darning needle, which I'm keeping at the top there for my crochet project. So here's one of them, but I bought two more at Unravel. Do I need project bags? Of course not. I've got more than I know what to do with, but oh my gosh, they're so precious. Look at these. Trava and wool. I put the information down here. She makes them as fast as she can because she's got a daytime job. So she does this in her spare time. Look at this. Recycled fabrics embroidered all over by her. Look at the fabric inside. She dyes the fabric, she prints on them. She writes the information about the bag on the inside. They are just fantastic. Got one other one, I bought two. Look at this one. Perfect, of course, for a little sock project. Look at that. Isn't it stunning? Again, lovely contrasting fabric on the inside. And these flowers and this beautiful fabric on the outside. It's a very soft cotton, but in a gabardine weave. Just stunning. Now, it so happens, of course, that I have lots of bits of fabric, linen fabric. Most of it goes to Haley Raggedy, who I interviewed in uh, at the end of last year. Have a look at it, at that episode if you haven't seen it yet. I highly recommend it. She is such a creative genius and so much fun to talk to. So there's an interview with her in one of the previous episodes. And she uses a lot of the offcuts from layer cake linen 
fabrics for her garments because she loves working with waste garment, uh, waste fabrics, sorry. She loves working with waste fabrics. But we have more than she needs. So I bought these and I thought, mmm, recycled fabrics. I got in touch with Susanna and more news coming soon. Very excited about that. Right, but there was more to be excited about at Unravel. Of course, I'd finished the socks for my husband, so I bought another pair, another hank of sock yarn with from a yarn dyer that I hadn't actually bought from yet. I hadn't actually met yet, probably seen her at the show, but hadn't properly met. And we managed to have a chat at Unravel. And the brand is called the Yarn Badger. And the yarn is a 80% uh, Blueface Leicester, 20% bamboo. The color called Fireside. And the colors are nice and muted because of the bamboo content of the yarn. The bamboo doesn't take up the dyes the way that the blue face Lester does, and then you that mutes down the colors depending on how well the bamboo is blended. And in this yarn, it's beautifully blended, so you get a nice muted color. And this is a self striping yarn. If I can find a picture of the finished effect of this, then I'll put it right here. I knew that my husband was going to love these colors. He will wear something like that easily for his work. He loves flashing a bit of sock at work as well. So that's going to be a pair of socks for him. And looking at the linen yarns, at Unravel and talking to people about, uh, for example, the gingham wingham shawl scarf that I did last year. I thought, oh, I would love to do something more with the idea of the checkerboard effect. This, of course, trying to mimic gingham, but I thought, well, what about checkerboard in double knitting? So I took two different colors of linen and started working with those to create a double-sided double-sided checkerboard scarf. So this is really identical on both sides in a blue and white. Gonna be a scarfy. And we're really talking about this kind of length here on the other side. So I'm about two thirds in, and then you just knot it once or you wear it as a headscarf, something like that. I thought it would be great for summer. In linen, the reason it's so small is this kind of double knitting is it's very slow progress because you're effectively knitting twice as much as what you see on either side. I also thought, well, it's wonderful in the linen. This is softening while you're knitting it, and then I'm going to dunk it in some hot water and it'll soften even more. But what about combining the linen yarn with a contrasting texture? Not a contrasting color, but what about a contrasting texture? So I combined it with Fiber Spades Cumulus. And look at this, guys. I am so excited about this. These are going to be kits coming soon. This is only a little sample. A little swatch, I should say. Look at that same color. And there, that's better. Make sure that I allow the light to fall on it rather than shine through it. But you get the little checkerboards. Same on both sides. Half of them are in linen and half of them are in cumulus. And cumulus, of course, is dreamily soft. It's exactly the same yardage as the linen yarn is, 600 meters per 100 grams. You're going to need 
nothing to do a little scarf of this kind of width, little scarfy for round your head, round your neck. Kids coming soon. And I'll make sure, of course, that the colors go beautifully with Larry Cake Linen. I also tried combining them with soliloquy, combining the linen with soliloquy. And I am not quite as keen. Now, here's a good example. This happens with, pro with knitting projects, doesn't it? These two, I'll show you the two yarns first, the two yarns, a variegated soliloquy. And then with the purple that is part of the moth kit. So this beautiful mauvey purple, which comes back in this variegated soliloquy. I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna be stunning together. You know what? They're not. It's not bad, but it's definitely not stunning. Sometimes when you put two yarns together that look wonderful on a skein, instead of enhancing each other, they kind of, it's almost like they fold in on each other. Look, it's nice, but it's nothing like the stunning you expect when you see them in a ball. And I think it is because those little squares don't give the uh, variegated soliloquy yarn enough space to really do its thing with all those colors. Because there's lots of colors in here, but they just get lost. See that? So that doesn't work. I'm going to have to try the linen with a solid, semi-solid soliloquy, see if that's better. But I have the feeling that the contrast in texture is then not going to be big enough. The other thing that I tried was linen with a variegated version, multicolor version that Sharon, Five Moons yarn, Sharon dyed for me. Combined that with the linen. Again, it's all right, but it's not great. The, oh my God, what is that feeling? You really only get with this one. It's so subtle and so interesting and so different. And it truly looks and feels precious. So that's what they're going to be. Right, so that gets me, talks me up to date with what I'm working on. So lots of design work going on and there's no other selfish knitting. The pair of socks that I showed you that I was working on for myself in November, still working on that, haven't actually touched them. And the big shawl that I was darning for my husband, the cashmere shawl, haven't worked on that anymore either. I'm far too invested in my design projects at the moment. So they haven't got any time, any love, those projects, even though I'm keen to work with them. But you know the drill. There's only so many hours in the day and um, things have been really busy. One more thing that I wanted to show you, because I'm going to get questions about it, I'm sure. Purchase from Unravel. Look at this. Lynn Roberts design, her the, the silver designer, has introduced these. It is a row counter in solid silver. Oh my goodness, I like it so much. She started publishing them a couple of weeks before Unravel saying, debuting this at Unravel and I immediately messaged her and said, oh, please can I have one? Because a lot of you have seen this before. I love creating a knitting chatelaine for want of a better word. There's an idea for you, Lynn. Nice necklaces that can handle something as heavy as this. It's not heavy, but heavier like this. And maybe that have lobster clasps or that can handle, have links that ha can handle lobster clasps at different places so that you can put progress keepers like this one, also by Lynn, on them, or and a knitting gauge. This one is 
by Anketin Beg. I hope I'm saying that right. Pro um, uh, needle gauge. Then I've got a little crochet hook for dropped stitches and my gorgeous silver bodkin hanging on here. But imagine a chain where they would hang with at little intervals, just like, do you know the little, um, the silver Victorian chatelaines that people had for household things like little scissors and things like that, and they would clip onto a belt. This could hang around your neck and you would have all your tools available and all you have to do is unclip the little lobster clasp and have your tool at the ready. Go for it, Lynn. I'll have one immediately. Okay, so I think that's it. Purchases, utter and utter indulgence from Unravel. My bags, my yarn, and hopefully... I'll see you again with a knitting update soon. Thanks for watching.